Welcome back. St. Lucia commenced its 2021 Hero Caribbean Premier League campaign on Friday, the 27th of August in St. Kitts. Prime Minister Philip J. Pierre, Minister for Youth Development and Sports, Mr. Casimir, and Minister for Tourism, Dr. Ernest Teller, teamed up with the St. Lucia Tourism Authority, offering inspiration to the home team through a series of video messages that will air throughout the game. The 2021 CPL has kicked off and the St. Lucian Kings are ready to conquer. The team comprises of lone St. Lucian, John L. Eugene. The nationalities of other players include South Africa, Trinidad, Guyana, Singapore, St. Vincent and the Grenadines, Barbados, Antigua, Jamaica, Australia, England and Pakistan. St. Lucia Kings took on the Jamaica Talawas on Friday 27th August 2021 in their inaugural CPL matchup. Prime Minister Philip J. Pierre in a video released and showed the team that support for them is abundant from all St. Lucians. St. Lucia Kings, we are thrilled that you are once again putting your best foot forward and highlighting our destination among the finest. Rest assured that our entire 180,000 strong is cheering you on and so to our friends and family in the diaspora. Best of luck on this match. Go strong, St. Lucia Kings. Go brave. Minister for Youth Development and Sport, Kenson Casimir, also sent well wishes to the team. Clip. Just want to big up the St. Lucia Kings. Of course, we will be doing it big this year. All of St. Lucia is behind you. We cannot be there physically, but we're there in the spirit. Go get it done. Tourism Minister Ernest Hilaire highlighted the importance of cricket in St. Lucia and urges the St. Lucia Kings to remember that the entire country is behind them. Hey Kings, cricket is special to us in St. Lucia, especially as we have had homegrown players who've left their mark on the sport. And now we have a team named after St. Lucia. So as you take on your opponents in this year's 2020 CPL, know that we are rallying behind you. We want you to win. So go brave, go strong, play hard. We are there supporting you. Reporting for the Hot 7 Nightly News, I am Karim Nelson. Thank you, Karim. Simply a containment measure. That's the view of the Tobago Business Chamber as it pertains to the continued state of emergency in Trinidad and Tobago. It is calling on the government to do more to push the country further towards vaccination, at least if that is what is being used as a marker for lifting the state of emergency and restrictions. Alicia Boucher has more in this report. President of the Tobago Business Chamber, Martin George, says... Using the SOE and public health restrictions to mitigate the spread of COVID-19 are reactive measures which continue to be peddled by the government. The whole purpose of this is to restrict movement, to you know, curb the, you know, the, the, the mingling, etc. So we're saying, all right, okay, yes, you have that on the one hand. However, what are the proactive, creative measures that the government is trying to take to also balance the scales? And that's where we're saying that they are not doing enough. George maintains that strategies to motivate the public to be vaccinated are lacking, and more effort has to be focused there if vaccination is being viewed as the path to a full reopening of the country. The government needs to do much more in terms of its vaccination drive, in terms of its marketing, advertising campaign. I have said so repeatedly, I have said that they need to, you know, use a lot of our local stars, our local people who the, the, the public looks up to, get them on board with some sustained campaign to ensure that you get that message across. If the voluntary process does not work, George says government could then give the population a timeline whereby it would take a legislative course of action. Let's set 1st January 2022 as a deadline by which if we do not get our vaccination rate up to the acceptable standard of herd immunity, we will have to legislate to vaccinate. So people have the opportunity to voluntarily go in. So therefore, when 1st January 2022 comes along, nobody could say, well, you know, you're trying to force this down my throat. But, you know, you had the opportunity voluntarily. We give you all the information. We give you all the literature, all the scientific data. According to the attorney, based on case law and precedents, mandatory vaccination could be a winning battle for the government. He notes that the various matters brought before the High Court over the border closure were ruled in favor of the state. The judges recognize that, look, in these circumstances, certain tough decisions may have to be taken for the good of the people. 
The Tobago Chamber believes the future of the country is at stake and the situation cannot continue as it is presently. We cannot continue in this amorphous, you know, mess of, you know, just a state of emergency curfew and you hoping that things change. Alicia Boucher, TV6 News. And in news further afield, Florida's COVID-19 cases and deaths have hit record highs. Health officials forecast that nearly 100,000 more Americans could die from COVID-19 between now and the 1st of December. Also, some hospitals in central Florida are running out of morgue space. Health officials are also warning about the dangers of the use of a drug intended for horses. More in this report. News on the pandemic in this country. This evening, the alarming new forecast. Authorities now say we could see nearly 100,000 more COVID deaths by just December. The U.S. now recording its fourth day with more than 150,000 new cases in just the last week. More than 12,000 new COVID hospitalizations every day. That's the highest number now since January. The vaccination rate is going up amid all of this. 202 million people now with at least one dose. That's 71% of everyone 12 and older. And tonight here, the CDC continuing to warn about the dangers of using a drug intended for horses and cows, a deworming medication touted on some cable news. ABC's Marcus Moore from Texas tonight. The country tonight facing a dire forecast, estimating nearly 100,000 more Americans could die of COVID between now and the 1st of December if current trends continue. I've seen a lot of people die over the last year and a half, and it is picking up pace. It's never been as bad as it is right now. It's truly awful. Texas today nearing its highest number of COVID patients. Some hospitals so overwhelmed, they're forced to transfer the sick. But in Houston, a glimmer of hope. A long line of cars at this vaccine site as cash incentives and the mounting crisis push more people to get the shot. Woo! It's over. Michelle Tate was finally able to get the vaccine after almost losing her life. The 42-year-old mother was waiting to get the shot when she got sick in March. After three months in a coma at Houston's Memorial Hermann Hospital, Michelle faced an agonizing road back, learning to walk and talk all over again. I decided to get the vaccine because I thought to myself, there is absolutely no way that I am leaving the safety of this hospital without being vaccinated. Florida facing its darkest days as some hospitals in the central part of the state run out of morgue space. Our Victor Akindo is in Miami. Baptist Hospital is one of the largest in Miami. Stay with us. There's more after the break.